Well, gang, a uh, hearty good morning from King's Polo Club here in just outside Cairo in Egypt, um, where I am part of the team that's building this amazing setup here. This is the block of stables um, that uh, the three of these blocks you will see they um, really had so much thought put into them. They made that the horses really feel to be a part of a group and uh, in a herd. They're not even doors on the stables. Um, and at the end of the stables here, you can see my office behind me. And you will hear the fans in the background. Um, it gets really hot here. We're looking at, at the moment between 40 and 45 degrees in the, in the day. So we're doing a lot of coaching at night and, and riding in the evenings and early mornings. And uh, this is my favorite time of day down here in the early mornings, all the horses so tranquil and uh, really such a, a lovely setting and, and uh, I just love being around these amazing animals. Having said that, um, let me just, uh, the fans are quite noisy, so let me just walk outside here. <coughs> and you will see as I walk out, let me find a chair just to sit and chat to you guys because there's a subject I really want to touch on of how strong should you be with your horses when you are schooling them. What is appropriate, my hand across that camera, sorry guys. Um, there we are and the stick and ball field directly behind me here that is almost ready to use. Um, so the facility coming on in leaps and bounds. Right, back to the subject. I, I think that the most important thing when I'm riding and uh, training horses is never to be angry while I'm training them if they're not doing what I'm asking them to do. My father, who was a really good player, he was eight goals and a great horseman, always gave me the advice of, Gavin, if you're angry, get off your horse, get yourself under control, and once you're under control, you'll be able to think more clearly about the problem you're facing. And that is such great advice, guys. Because to be honest, horses will try you to the nth degree. It's like having a family and children. Man, you love them dearly, but boy, they can really try you, okay? And horses are looking for boundaries. Just like children, horses are looking for boundaries. And you have to create those boundaries for them. But the biggest thing is if you are training horses and uh, you've got horses that are, are not performing as you want them to perform, you have to ask yourself one question. Is the horse not doing what I'm asking it to do because it can't? Or is it not doing what I'm asking it to do because it's just being a naughty little rat? Okay. And you can't make a, a sound judgment on that if you've got angry with the horse. Because when you're angry, you're going to overreact as in life, you know, one uh, reacts to friends or husbands or wives or whatever in anger and uh, afterwards there's such regret that you've done that, you know, and if you've just taken the time to get yourself under control and approached it in a nice, quiet, calm way, you'd have got a lot further down the track. So anyway, I digress from the horses, but it's exactly the same story. Get off the horse if you're angry. Get yourself under control and ask yourself that simple question. Is the horse not doing what you're asking it to do because it can't? And if it can't, also remember to do the medical checks because maybe it's not being able to do what you're asking it to do because it's got pain somewhere, okay? Mouth, um, tendons, uh, whatever. Have a good look and check that out and make sure you're not making the error of pushing a horse that is sore and it can't do because it's got a medical problem. Then there's the schooling side. And often if you find that you are battling to get a horse to do what you're wanting it to do, if you regress in those schooling lessons and go back to basic steps, you will find often a particular thing that it can't do and that is what's inhibiting it from going forwards to do what you're asking it to do at the current time. So don't be scared to go back. Um, there's a, a great saying from Pat Pirelli in his Natural Horsemanship book of take the time it takes. How long must I go on doing this lesson? And there's no answer to that. Do it until the horse knows how to do it, okay? Take the time it takes. So uh, 
that that's just number one if it can't do what you're asking it to do don't be scared to regress and teach those basic lessons again and you suddenly find actually you're moving forwards with the problem that you had but there will be times that that horse is actually just behaving like a little prat and uh, being naughty and I have no problem with you being strong with a horse not angry and not beating up on it but create the boundaries okay and uh, to be honest, if you, if you look at the, the way that you are approaching that uh, reprimand, remember horses hate moving their feet. If you get them moving, um, you're taking them out of a, of a comfort zone, okay? And uh, if you look at Clinton Anderson and his wonderful website, uh, Down Under Horsemanship, uh, you will see there that he talks about moving a horse forwards and backwards and left and right and getting its feet moving and when it reacts appropriately stop doing the stimulation and put it back in a comfort zone so there, there are many ways of actually getting that horse um, of reprimanding without getting over strong with a whip and things and uh, I would really encourage you to um, just keep your own emotions in check and to be honest I sound like I'm kind of preaching to you guys and I've been right at the forefront of making that same mistake. I can remember being up in a, a club called Gingenglovu up in Zululand um, when I was younger playing polo up there and I had a mare that was really giving me trouble on the field and I got so strong with her to a point that it was ridiculous. Um, I got so angry with her that I played like a fool, we lost the game and uh, I didn't do the horse any favors at all. I didn't help her. I didn't take her forward. I should have just taken her off the field, um, got another horse and uh, carried on the game and gone afterwards when I was cool and found out what the problem was. Is it just that she was being naughty? Um, or maybe it's a feed issue and she was overfed. All of those things come into why the horse is not behaving as you want it to behave. So just uh, you know what now I'm after this whole incident I'm driving home and my wife's in the car and she said to me Gav did you really need to get that strong with that horse and you know what I was so young and brash that um, I was trying to justify what I'd done and it was unjustifiable there's no justification for beating up on a horse okay so just don't get into that situation and when I look back at that situation and my answer and, and, and not being brave enough just to say Gav you are man you know what, uh, sorry love, I, I just behaved like an idiot, I lost my cool. So on the field I lost it and off the field I also lost the plot and, and wasn't brave enough to actually to admit to what I'd done. So all of that has left such a horrible feeling and yes I've apologized about it but it's been a great lesson because um, just remember that uh, the only bad mistakes in, in life that you make are mistakes you don't learn from and boy that's been a mistake I've really learned from. So I just hope you never get into that situation of beating up on a horse like that. And if you are, just get off it and get yourself calm. Now, just while I'm talking about this, I get so many questions about the bits and, and what an appropriate bit is for the horse. And uh, I get these people that are saying, oh, but that bit's so strong and it's going to hurt the horse. Well, every bit works on an avoidance of pain. Okay, just remember that. So if you've got a little snaffle in the mouth and you are yanking around and the horse is not um, responding to that uh, touch on the reins and you're having to yank on it, in my mind, that's far more unkind than putting the appropriate bit that the horse knows that if it doesn't respond, then it's going to actually um, be associated with a little bit of pain with that, okay? And uh, if you are... Um, doing that um, and, and you are riding where horses are responding to the light touches that to me really really is far kinder than yanking around on a bit that is too soft for the horse and not helping it at all so just uh, to touch on that subject as well and I'm not saying go and put the kitchen sink in the horse's mouth number one go back and get your riding good get onto a sheepskin um, get your riding really strong, get your legs strong, so that you can have soft hands, okay? And do all of those things as well, but uh, just uh, don't ride the horses when you cross, okay? Get off them, you'll find that your horses progress so much quicker. Really hope that helps, gang, and I'll see you in the next lesson.